I was wrong. A couple weeks ago, I made a video discussing my concerns about the future of Helldivers 2 because I believed the issues beleaguering the game were intrinsic to the gameplay loop and not necessarily weapon balancing. And I was wrong, mostly. Credit where credit is due. This update absolutely rips and it was 100% the right move. The game is a tiny bit easier now, which I initially thought could be good for a moment, but would begin to suck the entertainment dry as it became stale. That aspect I think still needs time to tell, but in the short term I can say the game is certainly way more fun after this patch. Beyond weapon buffs, which we'll get to in a bit, the entire system regarding health and damage has been tweaked, equating to a higher time to kill and significantly rewarding intelligent gameplay. In the last video I spent a fair amount of time talking about chargers, and how they have been pretty much the main contributor to short-sighted or even shitty weapon nerfs. Every time a major weapon meta has popped up, it was almost always in regards to the charger, because it is such an annoying enemy to deal with, especially in numbers. But since this patch, they're a lot less so. With the change to the abdomen's durability and reduction of the health pool, not only can many more weapons effectively damage the abdomen, it goes down faster, especially with weapons that have high durability damage. The overall armor has also been reduced from a level 5 to a level 4, meaning the armored sections of the charger can be damaged by more weapons including the autocannon, AMR, HMG, and more. These weapons aren't necessarily effective or even as effective as anti-tank weaponry, but they add a Helldiver's ability to spread the loadout around. However, chargers now do way more damage with their attacks. They're easier to avoid and they're easier to kill, but if you fuck up and let one get to you, you're toast, especially if you're not paying attention and you try to dive through a handrail like here. It's actually a really well done trade-off and contrary to what I was worried would happen, actually encouraged team play and loadout diversity significantly. In my last video, I talked about overtuned weapons causing players to sort of migrate to a one-trick pony or a one-man army loadout. But with more weapons than ever able to kick ass, team rosters have been insane. For example, I did a few matches with a friend where I ran a loadout punctuated by the Eruptor and the Recoilless Rifle, while he ran a standard Liberator and a Laser Cannon. The two of us absolutely just ripped through almost everything that came our way. Bile Titans, Chargers, Bile Spears, Shriekers, everything. Everything died to the two of us in one way or another. Also, the Laser Cannon? Fantastic for Shriekers. You absolutely have to give it a try. It's fucking great. But the important thing to me is that the game was not trivialized, like I was worried about. There is still a lot of challenge that comes down to spawn pool, map layout, and teammate competency. Now more than ever, if you have a bad team that doesn't work together or doesn't know what they're doing or a bad weapon loadout for the mission, it's going to be rough at best. Helldiver health has been reduced slightly to compensate for reduced headshot damage, meaning less random one-shot deaths, but significantly easier deaths kind of overall. It's really easy to screw up and have a cascade of bug breaches or bot drops just wipe the team over and over and over again. Even bad team distribution will still destroy you. Running all anti-tank or all anti-chaff will equate to a really bad time when the other side pops up. I was really worried with the flamethrower reversion and another buff on top of that, that everyone was going to be running the flamethrower again, but no, I've seen people bringing commandos, recoilless rifle, anti-tank, rail guns, laser cannons, pretty much everything to bug missions, which were before Pretty much a loadout check more than anything, as I said last time, where you had to bring a certain set of weapons or you were screwed. Now you could bring almost anything and still have a fun time, which is good. Power is fun. And I never really disagreed with that. My main concern was that the weapons were all going to get buffed and there wasn't going to be any sort of response on the enemy side. So I didn't really expect that among all the buffs and changes to enemy health and damage that the enemies would receive offensive power upgrades as well. Like I said with chargers, they're easier to kill, but they can kill you a whole lot easier too. Another example on the bot front is the berserker. God, did I hate that enemy. Still do, but I hated it more before. Insane amounts of health and spawning in groups of three to a million. Their health overall has been reduced. So if you spot them quick, you can get rid of them really fast. But if they sneak up on you, it's a one to two hit death. Very quickly, too. Like, you're dead. At this point, I would argue there are times where the game feels demonstrably harder. With some bad luck on breaches or drops or enemy force composition, some matches ended up feeling like a complete clusterfuck, while others just were kind of like a walk in the park. In fact, this update forced me to change my perspective on the difficulties of the bugs and the bots. I was strongly previously in the camp that bugs were way harder than bots. Sightings, things like the loadout restrictions, the overwhelming number of enemies, and stalkers. 
Oh god, the stalkers. But now that many more weapon loadouts are viable and allowing for better team play, I will 100% say that yeah, the bots are harder now. The difference between a level 8 bug mission and a level 8 bot mission is nothing short of pure insanity. I've seen some posts saying that like level 10 bot missions are a snooze fest now. And I just have to wonder where the hell can I get some of that? Because every time I try to play on like a level eight or higher, it's just a bullshit sandwich of ragdolling and rockets. It's like... I don't know. In my opinion, the adjustments to the rocket devastators are kind of moot. Limiting the rockets they can fire and making the collision smaller doesn't really matter when there's a fucking thousand of them spawning in a group shooting a wall of rockets at your position. It's, oh, thank God for cover, right? But Jesus Christ, they're still the bane of my existence, all right? But you know what enemy I've really started to hate? This motherfucker, the machine gun raider. Fires a spray of bullets at you faster than you can react, and each one does most of your health, even with heavy goddamn armor. And they spawn in groups! I actually hate these guys more than the heavy devastators now, which is crazy. Also, I've got a bone to pick with y'all, Arrowhead. Who decided it was a good idea for the factory strider to shoot three big cannon shots in a row? Did this get changed? I could have sworn that it only fired one shot, like the annihilator tanks or whatever the fuck they're called, or like the laser cannon turrets, but now they shoot three. Was this a change? It wasn't in any patch notes. So what the fuck, man? Oh god, and it ragdolls you so hard, too. I get it's a boss type enemy, but Jesus. I had this moment here where I got like dragged halfway across a bot outpost by just, it just hammered me. Oh. <sighs> At least anti-tank weapons make quick work of it now, like one shot of a recoilless to the face kills it. Which is, it makes sense, because it's an explosion, but god, I hate that enemy. I think, genuinely, I might have to retire my certification as a bot diver and move fully over into bugs, because <sighs> fuck that shit. Alright, let's talk about the buffs. I'm not going to go over all of them, because I don't want this video to be an hour long, so I'm just going to talk about my favorites. First things first, I absolutely love the Eruptor now. <laughs> when it came out, I didn't get it, right? I didn't understand it. It felt to me like a slower, clumsier autocannon that didn't really work as well, and the only pro to it was that you had a free backpack slot. And then of course, you know, it got nerfed into the ground in an attempt to fix the whole shrapnel bug thing. But now, <laughs> I get it now. Oh my God. It was sort of a pipeline for me, right? I've been using and enjoying the explosive crossbow on bug missions because in a patch a few weeks ago or something like that, they added the ability to close bug holes with that when they buffed it a little bit. And you know, it was pretty damn good, right? It had good armor penetration, the explosion, the ability to close the bug holes. It had a learning curve. It was a bit different from the weapons that I was used to. Before I used the crossbow a lot, I was using the slugger. So it fired a little bit slower than that and it had to work around the whole explosion thing, but I got it down. Once you get the learning curve down, it's a very good weapon to use. And I'm really happy that it's damage and radius got buffed because now it kicks absolute ass. But the Eruptor is like the crossbow's big brother. Less raw damage, but that shrapnel returning is something truly glorious. There's nothing like taking out an entire patrol of hunters and scavengers with one shot. It's actually viable to use again, has its niche back with the shrapnel, and more importantly, it's fun. And with the shrapnel back, that risk reward of killing yourself or a teammate with some piss poor luck it adds a factor to the gameplay that I really like. The crossbow buff is another huge thing for me. Like I said, I was already using it a lot because it worked really well on small groups, medium enemies, and bile spewers most importantly, but now it shines in a loadout. With higher armor penetration and more damage than the Eruptor, the crossbow can reliably one-tap bile and nursing spewers with a headshot. With the Eruptor, you kind of have to get lucky with the shrapnel spread if you want to aim for that one-hit kill, which is what I really like about what they've done with this update. The crossbow and the Eruptor, they're very, very similar weapons. They serve very similar functions, but they have just those small little details that set them apart from each other and make them useful depending on what the player wants out of their gun. That is, I think, the biggest goal of balancing weapons, especially for PvE games. They need to be strong, enjoyable, not overtuned, but most importantly, they need to be unique or have some unique features to similar weapons. Take the shotguns, for example. At this moment, there are three breaker variants and three punisher variants. Each with their own niche as of this overhaul patch. The Punisher variants were already pretty solid. The regular is a kick-ass all-purpose shotgun, the slugger trades raw damage for armor penetration, and the cookout trades raw damage for fire. The breakers were a bit of a different story. For the longest time, the default breaker was the shining star, and the other two were kind of not really worth using. The incendiary breaker was based off the spray and prey, so mechanically it worked about the same 
just with fire damage. But they both were just not as powerful as the original, so nobody used them. Then the incendiary and the spray and pray got buffed, and were more useful, except the incendiary was just the ostensibly better version. It played the same way, and the incendiary did slightly less damage, but the fire damage over time was just too useful. But now the bullet pattern of the spray and pray has been adjusted. It's been given a duckbill choke, which tightens up the spread and makes it a little bit more of a horizontal firing gun than a wide spread. And now it finally has a niche, with its tighter spread equating to more overall DPS if aimed well. Six shotguns all similar in relative function, but each one has an important niche to fill that somebody will find a use in. I'm actually seeing posts on multiple subreddits talking about how people are enjoying the spray and pray now over the incendiary, which is great because these different weapons should have a reason to be picked. And sometimes that requires nerfs, sometimes that requires buffs. More often than not buffs because of how the weapons have been set up now, but I still believe that if the incendiary hadn't had its magazine capacity be reduced, there still wouldn't be anybody wanting to use the spray and pray because they'd want to use the incendiary over it. The Liberator variants are almost there. Most of their primary differences are damage or fire rate or armor penetration, so I'm really hoping we don't see any new Liberator variants out of the future war bonds and continue to muddy the waters of the assault rifle pool. And I hope that the the current variations get more of their own identities to kind of set them apart from each other. Another huge improvement were the buffs and adjustments to anti-tank weaponry, namely the rocket launchers. My biggest issue with rockets before all of this was that explosive damage was woefully inconsistent, and it could vary the damage output based on like tiny little variations on shot placement. This meant enemies such as the Bile Titan could require up to like four or even five rockets to kill, even if one or two of those were face hits. This made weapons like the spear kind of useless even after they fix the targeting because unless you had that enemy facing you directly that lock-on shot likely wasn't gonna kill them but if it's not looking at you then why use a lock-on just use the recoilless if it's looking at you you can just see its face and shoot it in the face. Considering the spear trades off ammo capacity for the lock-on to do good damage, having those explosions not do their job is frustrating to say the least. After this patch, now I've been really enjoying actually running the recoilless rifle on terminated missions. I always love running some sort of anti-tank weapon because the satisfaction of obliterating a charger's face mere meters from your position, that's just true democracy. But the inconsistency and the borderline wimpiness of rockets at times, it kind of disillusioned me and I became a chaff clearer relying on the rocket pods or the rail cannon to deal with the heavies. This of course meant not only did I have to play on lower difficulties so I'd encounter less heavies, it also meant I was running the same loadout every time and it was getting boring. Contrast to now when using the recoilless is actually important and fun. So you know what? Yeah. Buffing is good and important, but I never disagreed on that. New problems are likely to pop up, and soon. There will likely need to be a nerf or two at some point. It'll happen. My concern is that whenever a minor nerf or adjustment happens, we'll be right back to square one with the community. Helldivers 2 right now is fast-paced, action-packed, fluid, and still hard as hell on the right difficulty. It's in a really good state of balance. Some weapons still need to be looked at, uh, Liberator variants still feel generic, and the guns like the Verdict and the Purifier need adjustments, but otherwise, it's in a pretty good state. But new weapons will come around. Some might suck, some might be amazing, but adjustments will happen, and somebody's favorite gun might get nerfed a bit. I think we all need to remember that game balance is an incredibly complex issue that even the biggest teams haven't gotten down to a science. There will be missteps along the way. It'll happen, and I don't appreciate the wider community suddenly acting like everything was right all along because of this patch that fixed everything. Any community that gets as big as this will get a bit toxic at times. Subsections will split off, some will be happy with the state of things, some won't, and some will just want to stir the pot. It's one thing to levy criticism and feedback in support of making the game better and more enjoyable. It's another to insult, put down, shit on, and harass a dev team that's honestly trying their best. Yeah, they're not perfect. I still have a few issues with the game overall, namely these bullshit instant death pits and lakes that if you drop into them and you die, bye bye samples. But oh my god, the state that this community has been in is just totally abysmal. When the game launched, there was this sentiment, right, that we had the best, most inclusive, and least toxic community. And sure, maybe for a time it was like that, but 
That is certainly not the community I see today. In the wake of the buff teases from the big patch, the only thing I saw from the primary community gathering places were negativity. Oh, they are gonna mess it up. Oh, they don't know what they're doing. What are they gonna nerf this time? They've completely lost it. They have no idea how to develop a game. Huge missed opportunity and so on and so forth. Like I said last time, I would wager that most people participating in that type of discussion probably don't even have any interest in playing the game anymore. And yet, after this patch dropped, everyone suddenly acted like they had full confidence in Arrowhead, knew the game was gonna get good again, or whatever else. Look, I continue to play, and continue to enjoy the game, even during the dark time. And I intend to keep playing it, even if my concerns in the future come true and it gets too easy. I can just bump up the difficulty. Because I fully like what this game has to offer, regardless of the minutia of like weapon balancing and whatever the fuck else. In all honesty, in my opinion, a game like Helldivers 2 is best enjoyed in bursts. Play for a week or so, move on for a bit, then play some more. Logging hundreds of hours in only a few months will burn you out, especially with a game as repetitive as this. This is why I said I was mostly wrong in the beginning. I still maintain that no matter what, Helldivers 2 will not hit that 400,000 player peak again. Because the majority of those people moved on to other games. You can buff, nerf, rework, add whatever, but the core gameplay will always be the same. New missions and new factions can be added, but that loop I described last time won't change, and that loop isn't for everybody. Which is okay. You know, I would have really liked to talk about the new war bond in this video, but unfortunately I work full time and haven't been able to fully unlock like the fun stuff yet, so that'll have to wait a while. But I, I hear it's a lot of fun, so I'm excited to play with it regardless. Anyway, I don't want to turn this into like a Helldivers channel. While I love the game, I have a lot of other stuff in the pipeline and many games to cover, so unless something more huge happens like the Illuminate drop, it'll be a bit before I talk about Helldivers 2 again. But if you enjoyed this video beyond the specific content and you want to see more of my stuff, I'd recommend hitting that sub button and sticking around. I'd appreciate it a lot. Regardless, that's all I have today. I just wanted to amend my previous video saying that the current state of the game is a good step in the right direction and I hope that it continues to be awesome. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day and I'll see you next time.